Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jacaria and I'm a year 13 student studying biology, chemistry, maths and psychology at A-level. In this video, I want to talk about how I managed to fit in about 30 hours of studying every week on top of all the other things I like to get on with. There will of course be timestamps in the description so you can jump around to any parts of the video you need to save you guys some time. Now before I actually get into it, I do just want to say that everyone's different and working hours doesn't necessarily mean you get more work done. So the whole idea is that hours do not actually equal productivity. Sometimes you can get two hours worth of work done in one hour and sometimes you end up stretching out 30 minutes of work in that same hour. So I don't want you to think that working less hours means you aren't doing enough work. It should also be noted, like I said at the start of the video, that I am doing four A-levels and so naturally I have to do a lot more work to stay on top of it. It could be that with the amount of work you have, you can work less hours and get it done and that's perfectly fine. I hope that even then this video will still be somewhat useful in helping you stay consistent with your hours and making sure that week on week you can make sure you're doing um, as much uh, revision as you can and need to. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is how I actually track my revision and also how I remove distractions using an app called Forest. Now this is the app that I use not only to track my revision but also to make sure that I can't use my phone while I'm meant to be studying which as most of you know is probably the easiest way to get distracted and totally lose track of your time. So on this app all you have to actually do is put in how long you want to study for and as soon as you hit start, the app will lock out your phone and make sure that you can't use any of the apps. And so that way you don't get distracted by your phone. And the app basically works using a reward system whereby the more revision you do, the more coins you get and the more trees you can buy in order to build your forest and give you that kind of sense of achievement that you've done a lot of work. And for that reason, I find that on top of removing the distractions of my phone, it also gives me this sense of achievement when I look back at the end of my week and see how much studying I've done. It lets me reassure myself that I'm not completely lazy and I can actually get things done if I put my mind to it. Now you don't necessarily have to use this app but I find having some sort of app to track your revision and remove distractions is really important in helping you stay consistent and get a good amount of hours done. And on top of that I feel like it acts as a motivation for you to be more consistent or help you realise whether or not you need to be doing more hours or whether or not you're doing a good amount of work. Now the next thing I want to talk about is something most students have heard of and that's the idea of um, using the Pomodoro technique to get more studying done. Now commonly people use a 25 to 5 split where they do 25 minutes of work followed by a 5 minute break. I find that this was something that I did use in the past and I found it was really helpful but it doesn't really work for me now. I find it's really hard to stay disciplined and stick to the 5 minute break period. It's really easy to get distracted and suddenly that five minutes can become 20 or 30 minutes and I feel like with that whole working and then break in such short intervals there's too many interruptions to my natural workflow and I find that really makes it difficult to stay on track and get more work done. I also find that 25 minutes isn't enough for me to make a significant impact on my work especially at A level where the workload is a lot higher than what was present at GCSEs and so 25 minutes of work isn't really going to help you make a big dent in your work. And for this reason, I like to chunk my revision in larger blocks. Now, it's up to you what works best for you, but I personally work in two hour blocks. Within that two hours, I can break it up into, for example, 30 minute blocks, whereby I can do 30 minutes of one subject and then switch to another subject and do 30 minutes of that, etc, etc and I'll make sure to fill up that two hours with nothing but work. And after that two hours, I'll step back and reevaluate what I've done and decide what to do next. And I find this way I can not only get a lot of work done and feel a lot more productive and also have fewer interruptions and distractions to my workflow that would otherwise make it a lot harder for me to do two hours of solid work. But obviously after re-evaluating and deciding what to do next, I won't start working again until I take a break. And that brings me on to the next point that I want to talk about. Now you've always been told that taking breaks are important. 
and I want to put an emphasis on the idea of taking your break as an actual break. I find it's important to mentally let yourself know that you are taking a break and I find the best way to do this would be to get out from your desk and whether you go to your living room or your bed just move away from the actual workplace that you do most of your revision or work at and that way you can get a change of scenery and actually move away from that mindset of work. I feel without the distinction between your workplace and where you take your breaks you're unable to really work as effectively as possible but you also find it a lot harder to enjoy your breaks. If you don't separate the two properly then while you're working you'll be thinking about how you're feeling really tired and just want to take a break and when you're not doing work and you're taking a break you'll be thinking about how you should really be getting work done and suddenly your deadlines become very apparent to you and you start stressing out for no reason. Breaks are a perfect way for you to move away from the stress of working and give yourself that well-deserved moment of relaxation. And in my opinion, if you want to study long hours, you have to give yourself longer breaks. Now, the next point I want to make is something that you might not expect to hear from someone who's trying to help you work more, but that's to take a day off. For me personally, I take Fridays off where I do no work and honestly it's probably been one of the biggest factors in helping me work longer hours at a consistent rate. Even if you manage to work 6 hours a day for example, there would eventually be a point where your quality of work starts to take a rapid decline and you're finding yourself forcing yourself to sit at your desk and get through the hours rather than actually being productive and getting a lot of work done. And I feel once you reach that point, working becomes a lot harder and you're less inclined to work longer hours because you don't enjoy the process as much. Taking an entire day off lets your brain recharge and recover from the week's worth of work. Now, if I have school that day or any online classes, then of course I'll do the work from that class and I'll attend the lesson. But apart from that, I don't do anything on that day that's work related or has anything to do with my A-levels, minus a bit of Anki at the end of the day if I can be bothered. And I find that by doing this, it really lets you hold on to your sanity and make sure that you're not burning out and just stressing yourself out way more than you need to. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is something that I like to call the effort hierarchy. Naturally, you will have different levels of energy for different parts of the day. So I know for a fact that I usually have a lot more energy in the mornings and the afternoons versus in the evenings when I'm a lot more tired. And for that reason, I like to save my higher energy tasks for the morning for when I have a lot more energy and can get through it a lot easier. Now, everyone's effort hierarchy will be different and it's based on what tasks you have to get done and how much energy each of those tasks take. Now for me, at the top of my effort hierarchy is probably doing exam questions and making active recall Anki cards. I find that these take up the most energy and also the most time consuming. So I like to get it done at the start of the day when I have a lot more energy and I'm feeling a lot more motivated. Following that would probably be any homework that my teachers have sent me. Now depending on how much work I've been given or the difficulty of the homework, that can fluctuate but typically speaking it takes a little less energy than actually doing exam questions or making Anki cards. And the last thing on my effort hierarchy, the thing that probably takes the least amount of effort from me is doing my Anki cards and for that reason I tend to leave them to the end of the day where I have a lot less energy and I'm not really feeling like doing anything. This way I'll be able to get through my Anki cards and I'll have just about enough energy to make it to the end of the day. Now you'll notice in some of my previous videos that I mentioned how I do Anki in the evening and that's because it would be a waste for me to do it during the day when I have more energy than is actually needed for those cards. Now this hierarchy is an absolute and you don't have to completely follow it but it can really help you give an idea on how to structure your day and how to go about all the separate tasks on your to-do list without burning out or without being too tired at the end of the day so that you can't actually get all your tasks done. And with that, I have reached the end of the video. So if you enjoyed it or found it useful, do let me know, leave a like, subscribe, and give me any feedback on the sort of videos you wanna see in the future. That's been all from me and I'll see you in the next video.